one school enabling men and women from ministry around the world, one curriculum being offered in the language of each nation, one faculty serving the student body in 17 diverse cultures and over six time zones? Well, this is the story of the European Nazarene College, a school in many nations enabling Christ-like disciples for ministry. While the Church of the Nazarene in Europe began with just two small districts in the 1960s, a vital need was recognized early on. A need to prepare and educate men and women to become the future leaders of the church. This need was met in 1965 when property in Busingen, Germany was purchased. And with a campus, EUNC began to take life. Students from around the world traveled to receive instruction in English, truly making EUNC one school for many nations. Due to the political shift in the early 1990s, further expansion became possible in Eastern Europe. However, due to language barriers and distances, it soon became clear that a new model of learning was needed. This is when extension education was born, and EUNC's vision grew from one small campus to a multi-location school with instruction offered in various languages. I lost my job, and I was wondering, what will I do? And I came to think, okay, but I like to study theology, Let's start with UNC. I have a degree in computer science. It's so completely different from the theology. It's for sure that if the campus was not there, I would not have studied because for me, it's, it, it would have been impossible with a family to travel to uh, Bussingen. Over the next 15 years, the learning centers thrived. By 2008, 75% of UNC students were taking advantage of these centers. At the same time, the Boozingen campus was experiencing an income decrease and a cost increase, which led the leadership decision to fully focus on education through the learning centers, proving that EUNC is not defined by a set of buildings, but by their passionate men and women serving in ministry. Without possibility to have a learning center in Bulgaria, I would not be able to complete my degree because I cannot take time off to, to go and study intensively on campus. The education I got through uh, European Nazarene College uh, benefited not just uh, the ministry I'm involved in, but also my personal life a lot. I learned that uh, theology is not something that you learn in class, but it's also something that you can live out. It helped me to develop my, uh, me as a pastor and um, as, as God's servant, I'm really thankful. Through the learning centers, we now offer on-site lectures, classes through video conferencing, access to libraries and databases, as well as fully online education. The alumni are currently serving as leaders in local churches and on districts around the world. EUNC is reaching more men and women today than they ever have. As I reflect on the history of EUNC, I am amazed how God has been guiding and leading us from the very beginning to, to this day. Personally, I've been a student here at EUNC, later came back to be a pastor of the college church and then a teacher, and now for nine years being the, the rector of the school, and to see how God has been guiding and leading us is just phenomenal. As I reflect on the original charge that has been given to the school as it was started in 1965, most importantly, keep the blessing of the Lord on the school. This is what we experience still today. And that's what we want to do as we are moving forward and explore even new possibilities to fulfill the mission of the school, that is to train men and women for the ministry and be, become a blessing to the people that we are serving. EUNC's hope for the future is to develop learning centers for all the districts they serve on the Eurasia region, so those with a calling for ministry can be prepared. And while EUNC's story has gone through transition, change, and expansion, the mission has always remained to enable Christ-like disciples for ministry.
Got a new song today. Old things have passed away Your love has stayed the same Your constant grace remains the cornerstone Things that we thought Je m'appelle Raoula El Mardi, euh, je suis étudiante internationale à l'université Tribeca Nazarene. Je suis Dani Goran Nandito à Tribeca Nazarene University. Je choisis Tribeca mainement parce que le niveau personnel de l'interaction que j'ai expérimenté pendant mon recrutement process. Ça m'a donné une sensation de dire que je me sens que je suis là. I chose Trebeka because they came to my school and I felt called to be a part of this wonderful university. Its environment has helped me develop in so many ways and I believe this has been the best choice I've done in my life. Trebeka was my first and only choice and here in the U.S. we have so many opportunities to do research so I think that's a really important thing especially in the medical field. Once I graduate, I plan on going into grad school, maybe get a PhD in physics or a PhD in engineering because I feel at Trebeka, at least at this moment, I would feel perfectly prepared going to any sort of postgraduate degree and really be successful in it. My plan is to take the MCAT to go to a med school and thanks to Trebeka, I feel that I'm really prepared and really confident about that since in the last three years, all the students that took the MCAT were able to go to a med school. When I graduate from Trebeka, I want to be performing, traveling and writing songs. And I feel like the program here gives me the opportunities to do that and to know how to do that as well. It was during my sophomore year that Trebeka helped me land my first real internship. It was at a local CPA firm and that's where I learned the basics of accounting. And one thing led to another and then after graduation, I'm going to Deloitte at a big four consulting job. And if it wasn't for Trebeka, I would not have ever landed that job. Uh, Trebeka being such a small school, we get the opportunity to really experience a one-on-one -on -one relationship with our professors. 
and that enhances our learning experience. Tribeca has been a good decision because it feels like home. I've been able to grow in community here and I've made a lot of lifelong friends even in my first semester. Another thing that really brought me towards Tribeca is that location, being in Nashville and being in the city and me pursuing music. There's a concert on every street every weekend. It's me being able to be in the music capital of the world. You should really choose Tribeca because the program is amazing. The professors are highly qualified and they really want to see you succeed. They take pride in seeing you be the best version of yourself. What begins here transforms the world. Our diverse ecosystem comprised of students from over 26 nationalities make us one of the most cosmopolitan universities in Africa. Through our outstanding programs and low student to lecturer ratio, core ingredients to our academic excellence, our alumni include accomplished and innovative individuals recognized across the globe. An affiliate of the Nazarene institutions based on Christian values, our character formation, mentorship, and community initiatives will give you an edge and allow for social, spiritual, and cultural development. Further, our flexible modes of study fit very well into your schedule and the leadership skills you attain along the way allow you to meet the challenges of today and partake in our quest for transformation. Indeed, what begins here transforms the world. Can you imagine one school enabling men and women from ministry around the world? One curriculum being offered in the language of each nation? One faculty serving the student body in 17 diverse cultures in over six time zones? Well, this is the story of the European Nazarene College, a school in many nations enabling Christ-like disciples for ministry. While the Church of the Nazarene in Europe began with just two small districts in the 1960s, a vital need was recognized early on. A need to prepare and educate men and women to become the future leaders of the Church. This need was met in 1965 when property in Busingen, Germany was purchased. And with a campus, EUNC began to take life. Students from around the world traveled to receive instruction in English, truly making EUNC one school for many nations. Due to the political shift in the early 1990s, further expansion became possible in Eastern Europe. However, due to language barriers and distances, it soon became clear that a new model of learning was needed. This is when extension education was born, and EUNC's vision grew from one small campus to a multi-location school with instruction offered in various languages. I lost my job, and I was wondering, what will I do? And I came to think, okay, but I like to study theology, Let's start with UNC. I have a degree in computer science. It's so completely different from the theology. It's for sure that if the campus was not there, I would not have studied because for me, it's, it, it would have been impossible with a family to travel to uh, Bussingen. Over the next 15 years, the learning centers thrived. By 2008, 75% of UNC students were taking advantage of these centers. At the same time, the Boozingen campus was experiencing an income decrease and a cost increase, which led the leadership decision to fully focus on education through the learning centers, proving that EUNC is not defined by a set of buildings, but by their passionate men and women serving in ministry. Without possibility to have a learning center in Bulgaria, I would not be able to complete my degree because I cannot take time off to, to go and study intensively on campus. The education I got through uh, European Nazarene College uh, benefited not just uh, the ministry I'm involved, but also my personal life a lot. I learned that uh, theology is not something that you learn in class, but is also something that you can live out. It helped me to develop my, uh, me as a pastor and um, as, as God's servant. I'm really thankful. 
Through the Learning Centers, we now offer on-site lectures, classes through video conferencing, access to libraries and databases, as well as fully online education. The alumni are currently serving as leaders in local Small creatures and flying birds, King of the earth and all nations, you princes and all rulers on earth, young men and women, old men and children, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted, his splendor is above the earth and the heavens, and he has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his faithful servants of Israel. The people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Let's continue our worship.
Yes, we want to keep praising the Lord this morning, don't we? It's good to have you here, either online or in-house. Uh, we have a few more seats if you want to come and bring a friend next week. Uh, we are Eastside Church, and we're glad that you're here with us. I'm Joe Bell. I pastor here. Um, we've got to just remind you about our church family and what's going on. We've got some praises this week. The Monacos have moved, <laughs> and their house, I'm sure, is still a mess. But thanks so much to everyone who helped with that. Also, uh, talked to Deborah this morning. Her mom is home. There's still some areas of concern, but we're praying and believing that God has a good plan and a good purpose, and we want to continue to remember her. And we had a wonderful VBS. We'll have a video up later today of pictures and, and videos of all the stuff that happens. But we had a great time and really worshiped God with a bunch of kids. And we're thankful for your support with that. Uh, as we pray, we want to continue to remember our brothers and sisters in churches around the country and around our community. Uh, we want to continue to remember those who are taking care of us health-wise in these days for our police and law enforcement folks, for our teachers. Tomorrow's a big day. The Gaston County School Board meets tomorrow night. So please pray for uh, Jeff Booker, the superintendent, and the school board, and all the people that are going to be part of that. Uh, want to remember, you can be seated. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> want to remember to pray for our teachers as they're getting ready to start. Who knows what's going to happen this year? I uh, want to remember our military folks, those who are protecting us and others in this separated time. Uh, we want to pray for our leaders who have been appointed and elected above us. We want to pray for the elections this year that they would just be different than everything that's going on. Uh, we want to pray for other believers around the world, including our Nazarene family. Paul Cunningham pastored Olathe College Church for 30 years and was one of our general superintendents and he passed away this week. A couple of other pastors that we know have passed away this week. Uh, Joshua McClure, who's part of a wonderful North Carolina pastor family, is dealing with stage four cancer. Oscar Pareda, our leader of our Hispanic ministry, is dealing with stage four cancer. And we just, we want to lift them up in prayer in a special way. Uh, also, Hope in Christ, a Christian, Coltoff will be here as the Associate Director of Hope in Christ a week from tomorrow. So, praise God. That's, that's awesome stuff. We're looking forward to that. Uh, remember what's going to happen as we find out what's going on with school. We'll know more about that. Uh, pray for your leaders, if you would. Uh, also, remember the families in our church. That's on your bulletin there. And uh, continue to pray for those and the things that are coming up in the days ahead. And we would appreciate you doing that. You can also send your prayer requests to bit.ly slash espraise and we'll get those up as well. Okay? Now if you wouldn't stand back up and let's remind ourselves who we are and why we do what we do. Okay, let's please read together Acts 2, 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Amen. Now let's join together in that hymn of the church, How Great Thou Art.
lyrics sometime. When you're used to singing and getting into it, and then the piano player is slower, kind of messes you up, you know. I'm going to have <laughs> Well, I am thankful that we all are here today, and it's great to see you, and it's great for you to see me. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just glad to be here. And you know, we're going through a lot, and we miss congregating together. We miss one another because we're family. But you know, the family's not going to make us perfect. The families will help us. But the only one we have to look to is the guy up there, our God. And I'm pretty sure that what we're going through right now, in my heart, it's him trying to get our attention. He's trying to get us to slow down a little bit. Consider him. We know that we're not in control anymore. We're not in control of this world. But we know the one who is. So let's ask him for guidance. And let's pray together this morning. And I have a couple of non unspoken requests I'd like you to remember.
Now join us in one of the great hymns of the church, Victory in Jesus. seated. I lied. <laughs> Remain standing. Well, go ahead and sit because this is kind of a long passage. So please pay attention to the word of the Lord this morning from the book of Paul to the Romans. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit who gives you life has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering. And so He condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirements of the law might fully be met in us, who do not live according to the flesh but according to the Spirit. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set 
on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind, is, the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not to submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the Spirit gives life because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of His Spirit who lives within you. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it is not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship. And by Him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit Himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in His sufferings in order that we may also share in His glory. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. God's people respond, thanks be to God. And now our speaker of the hour, Brother Michael Stanley. <laughs> morning. Good morning. Um, thank you for being here. Um, Father, hide me behind the cross. Let me speak only what you want me to hear, what you want me to hear and us to hear, Lord. Just pour yourself out through me and touch, heal, help. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Today's message is victory in the spirit in today's world. Victory in Jesus, a wonderful, wonderful old hymn. Thinking about it is amazing. In the world today, as bad as the world today is, hatred, anger, envy, strife, all the bad things that are just poured out on us every day are hard to comprehend, are hard to take, are hard to understand that how a world that started loving Christ, how the United States especially, that started as a country that loved Christ, that wanted religious freedom when they broke away from the tyranny that they broke away from. To see us go back to such a hellish landscape in honest terms, we are, that this world has just turned terrible. We as Christians have to stay above that. God asked us to stay way above that, but as long as we're above that, we can still show his light. The scripture passage is really strong in saying that if you live according to your flesh, like you see people of the world today, they do not want to they want to live a lie. They want to live, you know, hatred towards other people and towards God. They want to live lives directly in contrast to the Bible and think they're good people. That's not anywhere close to the truth. If you live in Christ, if you've turned your body over to him, if you continue to, as the scripture said, crucify yourself to the flesh, which is hard to do. We are fleshly creatures. It's the toughest battle you'll ever fight every day is with your flesh. You want to get angry. You want to do things you don't want to do. You want to say things you don't want to say. You feel things you shouldn't feel. As long as you're in fear with the Holy Spirit, as long as you're living according to what the Spirit has to say, you'll live. If you start living towards the flesh, you'll draw away and die. Wow, that got hot. <clears throat> um, so, the way to live through, through the Spirit 
is through God's word. That's how we learn what God has to say to us. Reading the word, reading the scripture. As going through this um, subject line for the last couple of weeks, this, God has spoken to me. Um, there's a, a lot, of, plenty of scripture in the Bible about living. There's plenty of scripture in the Bible about how you should live, living in the spirit, living a victorious life. Romans 8 is the one that we tend to preach and teach as to how to actually walk in the spirit. You have to die to that flesh. You have to war against it. You have to put it down every morning. When you wake up, you have to say, Lord, I want this flesh away from me. I want to think what you want to think. I want to breathe what you want to breathe. I want to say what you want to say. I want to feel what you want to feel. I want to live with your spirit fully flowing through me. That's the only way you'll ever get there is to allow God's spirit to fully flow through you. There'll be times during the day, even a good day, there'll be times during the day where that flesh will want to drag you to the side. You want to do something, something will happen, somebody will cut you off in traffic and you want to go, ah, ah. <laughs> Lord help them. It's hard to do. You'll walk through the house and you'll stub your toe. You want to, ah, ah. <laughs> Lord help my toe. It's tough. This flesh wars against you with everything. Every breath you breathe, it fights you. Your mind fights you. But as long as your mind is set on spiritual things, as long as your mind is set on the Lord, as long as you're walking the way that Christ asks you to walk, talking the way Christ asks you to talk, and that's one of my toughest things. I work in the construction industry, and those boys have terrible language. It is terrible. And it's, it's you know, on the phone to my wife sometimes, and she'll hear one of the guys come up, and he'll be talking to me about what need, what we're doing and things. And she's like, oh, my Lord, can, can you kind of shut the phone off or something? Because I don't want to hear that. <laughs> and I'm so, you know, I understand, baby. I don't like hearing it either. Um, but that's just normal vernacular nowadays. All, all these words, all these, you know, you know the words. You hear them all the time. And I'm not about to repeat them from the pulpit. But... You know, you know the, 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 that's easy to say when you're in that, in that little circle of people. It comes out automatically because it's what you hear. So you have to immediately, every time he walks away from me, I have to say, Lord, now, I don't want to, you know, help him first because he is one of those Christians who is very upright, upstanding in his church when he's in church. When he's out of church, he's a whole different person. God help him. And I tell him consistently, you know, you really ought not do that. You know, we're, we're kind of close. Um, and I said, you know, God's not, it's as much as you feel like you're okay, God's not blessing you like, like he could because you're pushing him away with that attitude, with that language, with what you do. I said, I'm sure when you go to church and sit in that pew, you're right there. But if you don't take God out with you when you go, if you just leave him in that pew with you, you know, you, Lord, you stay here. I'll, be, you know, I'll see you next week. You're not doing what he's asking you to do. Living in the flesh is death. That's a hard word to get. That's a hard word to hear. Knowing that when you fail, when you let that flesh take over, you have to immediately say, Lord, I'm sorry. I didn't catch it. I tried. But the more you do it, the further away you get. And next thing you know, you're doing things and saying things that you're not saying, Lord, I'm sorry. This, you know, the flesh kind of got me. You're like, oh, that's okay. Little things. Little things. Little things are like grains of sand in a car engine. One or two grains of sand won't hurt one. One or two grains of sand every 30 minutes will kill a motor in an RV. We can't let the little things creep up on us as Christians, those who are called to be Christ-like. That's what Christian means, for those who didn't know. Sometimes you got to wonder. <laughs> because I hear a lot of people today call themselves Christians. Oh, I'm Christian. I love God. I know God. But you don't live that way. 
So if you're not living that way, obviously you don't know God. You might know about him or of him, but do you know him? Is he inside? Is he living through you? Are you glowing with the Spirit? Now, you don't see, you see very few people like that nowadays, and it's, it's one of the few things that, that I really, it does bother me about our church and many other churches. Um, not this church, the church overall. We don't stress that sanctified life, that holy life that God asks us to be. God asks us to be holy. Now, does God give us things that we can't handle? He does that we can't handle. But through him, the Bible says we can do all things. If he gives you a commandment, be ye holy as I am holy. That's a commandment. When Jesus says things, he said things in the Bible more times, you know, everything he said wasn't just a suggestion. Hey, I want you to love people, but it's all right if you don't. I want you to, anything he said, those red letters are commandments. Hey, love as I have loved you. Love your neighbor as yourself. That was the greatest of all commandments. Now, actually, in the Ten Commandments, the first thing was no idols. God's a jealous God. But when Jesus came, it became a little different. He wanted you to love as others as you love yourself, as he loves us. We're to love everybody. That's a different feeling. You love people who hate you. You love people who fight against you. You love people who do everything in their power to destroy you, you are still to love them. It's a hard fight. You can't do that on your own because the flesh is going to get mad and want to fight back. Through the Spirit, God will show you another way. The Bible says if you heap goodness on people who work against you, it's like putting coals or hot fire on their head. I'd a whole lot rather do that. I'd a whole lot rather be good to those that hate me. Don't strike it, strive against them. Love them. And let them see the difference. Because if we're not showing any difference from them, why should they want to serve a God? Why should they want to serve our God? If we're no different than them, at the end of the day, why should they want to serve God? Hey, man. That's another hour I can sleep on Sunday. Two hours if it takes you time to get up. <laughs> takes my wife an hour and a half. And she's very proud. She don't mind. Um, so if we're not living different, if we're not showing different, if we're not showing people the Holy Spirit through us, you know, there were, like I said earlier, there were very few people who ever... Um, lit up with the Holy Spirit, Billy Graham was one in this day and age. There are very few other ones still out there who light up with the Holy Spirit. But imagine if you could pray enough, love enough, serve enough to where when people saw you, they knew before you ever spoke a word, that's a Christian. They knew Billy Graham before he... And you, could, you could put... Uh, Big clown mask on Billy Graham's head. And when he walked in the door, they would know exactly who he was. They would know he was a Christian. He was a servant of God. By the way, God's presence came into a room. He was in field. He was indwelled. Imagine if we can just get a touch of that. It's easy. All you can do is ask for it. God will give it to you. There's no price to be paid. It's a free gift. So we live our life in the spirit so that we can gain this victory over this evil world. And there are 
25 people in this church right now? 25 people. How many people do you see in a day? Say even if you don't get out much, you see four to five people a day. Four people a day, that's 100 people touched. Those 100 people touched by a spirit. See a smile. Man, you know, you see somebody who don't have a smile on their face, give them yours. That's one of those Facebook memes everybody shows. So, you'll change a person's life. You'll change a person's day. You'll change a person's attitude just by your spirit around them. And it will really amaze you how that happens. God will give you the opportunity if you ask for it. God will give you the chance to show his love if you ask for it. If you get up in the morning and say, Lord, I want to be a blessing to someone today, you'll be amazed at how many people that you will encounter that need a blessing. You'll be amazed at, even in a convenience store, somebody you don't know, somebody you don't see, someone driving down the road in traffic, and traffic is back to back, and you're sitting there, and you look over, and that person was like, I've got to go. Look at him and smile. Be polite. Be nice. They might look at you and go, what's wrong with him? What's he smiling about? I'm smiling because I have Jesus. I've had people roll the window down. And I'm like, here it comes. Thank you. For what? Just smiling. It's kind of crazy. And I don't, didn't expect to hear anything. So, you know, I just kind of smiled, threw my hand up. Hey, you know, you're having a bad day. It's good. We're okay. Let's go. If you sit in 485 very much, you'll sit in traffic. You'll see people aren't happy. I run 485 all day. 77 is the same way. Just smile. You're going through a store. Someone's coming up an aisle, and I guarantee you, if you go up many aisles, you'll see somebody who's not happy. I'm grocery shopping. I hate this stuff. I hate wearing that mask. Now, it's hard to smile with a mask on. But your eyes also tell a story. If you're smiling... Your eyes kind of squinch up. Something. You can nod your head. You don't have to smile. You don't have to nod your head. Wave. Anything. An acknowledgement. People today don't get acknowledgement. So many people walking down a grocery aisle, walking through the store, walking down the road, putting gas in the car, don't get acknowledgement that they're even alive. It's a sad world. Tons of people. No acknowledgement. If we, in Jesus' spirit, in the Holy Spirit that Christ fills us with, smile. Have a good day. God bless you. Have a good day. It's sweet enough. You'll be amazed at the turnaround when you say, God bless you. Now you'll get those who will just be, the devil's really got to work on them. But you've tossed a seed, and the Bible says let's plant seeds. They keep hearing that. They keep seeing that. They keep seeing even if they're angry with you. What are you talking about, God? Hey, God blesses me. He can bless you too. You don't have to be angry. You don't have to live a defeated, oh, look at that nasty attitude you got. Let's get rid of that. Sometimes you'll have to face some filthy language, some filthy, you know, people look at you hard sometimes when you're talking to Jesus because the devil wars hard against Jesus. Many people nowadays are filled with a, with a very evil spirit. We see that day to day. If you spend much time on social media, you see it all the time. I try to shy away as much as I can from the nasty, you know. It's just terrible. So let's see if we can't lighten up this world with a smile, with a wave, with an acknowledgement. Like I said, a nod of a head. How you doing? You don't have to say a word. It's, I see you there. You know, a hundred times a day I'll go, nod my head, throw my hand up. People I don't know. You know, 
and acknowledgement to people nowadays is a big difference because they're used to seeing anger. They're used to seeing hatred. They're used to seeing um, strife in this world because we are just surrounded by it. So as God's people, let's wake up in the morning. Let's ask God to fill you with the Spirit so that it'll shine through your eyes, your smile, your countenance. That he'll keep a hand on you. That he'll touch you. He'll strengthen you to show his love to everyone you hit, you run into. And in that, we'll live a victorious life through Christ. Victory in Jesus. Wonderful song to sing. Wonderful thought to keep. Um, first one to tell you that I fight that battle during the week. Halfway, two-thirds way through the week, I'm like... Lord, you're going to have to help me. I'm not going to make it. I need the victory. I need you to come in. I need you to lift me up. Keep me smiling. Let me know that I'm making a difference in this world that I'm walking around in. Because if you turn your head, you'll see the things you don't want to see. You'll see this anger. You'll see this hatred. But if you turn your head and look and focus and show them Jesus. If you just ease one person a day, if you slow down one person a day's anger, if you make a difference in one person a day, 25 people help 25 people. Tomorrow, 25 more people. It's 175 people a week. If you touch one person, one person a day, just smile at them. Show them God's love. It would really amaze you at what a difference this world would be be a big difference. Just a little something to think about. Victory in Jesus, living victorious by the Spirit. It's a job. It's a chore. Um, it's not easy because not only is everyone else going to be fighting against you, but your own body fights against you. The flesh fights against you. But we have Jesus who will put that flesh aside, who will strengthen your body, strengthen your mind, and hold you up to a world that can see Jesus shining through you. So let's try that this week. Let me know how it goes. I'll see you next Sunday. Is that a good deal? All right. Father, we thank you for coming with us today. We thank you, Lord, for joining us in this service, Lord. We thank you for the word that you've given to me and to your people, Lord. We praise you so much for the victory that we know we have through you. And we pray, Lord, for a victorious church in this world of hatred and strife. Just cuddle up around your people, Lord. Strengthen them. Touch them. Lord, give them the strength to show your love through this world today. And we'll be sure to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. For it's in our precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are so thankful for God's word today through our God's servant. Through our God's servant, Michael Stanley. We appreciate him and his work. But uh, just remember things going on. Lego Walk is today. Right after that, we're going to be up on the stage. You can still make donations either in purpose or in person or online. And we'd love to have you be part of the help we're giving to the Resource Connection Gateway. Also, you can drink water and put your gals up on the wall. Uh, we'll have pictures of that up, but we want you to be involved and hydrate and think about healthier choices. I'm asking you to be part of our outreach team. You can go to bit.ly slash esbless and you can sign up for Bless Every Home. And then you will have some people around you that you can choose to pray for. You can add other names and addresses to that list or take some off. But it gives you a chance to start regularly remembering to pray for and care for others. 
And then we're going to have an outreach team that's going to start meeting Tuesday evenings. We're going to pray for God to help us reach into our community. We're going to plan our next steps and reach out to other people and make real connections with people in need. So we would love to have you be part of that. Please see me about that, okay? Also, we have interest in a food ministry. If we could get two or three more people who would be part of that on an occasional basis, we're going to have non-perishable foods brought in to the church as you feel led, and we have some people, Pam Hay and others, who are helping us to get some other types of food just to help our people and those we know, again, to make an impact in this community. So if you're interested in that, let me know. All right, look at your bulletin. Let's see about our announcements. Talked about the Lego Walk. We have morning devotions every Monday through Friday. The ministry leaders class is tomorrow at 630 we have Tuesday Men's Bible Study at Hillbillies, which is supposed to be open this week, at 12.30. Wednesday Bible Studies are at 7. Uh, English Language, we also have online, bit.ly slash capital E, capital S, 20 adults. Um, and then the Spanish Bible Study will be here as well. Thursday Teen Time from 6 to 8, our teenagers are having a blast caring for each other and loving God. Uh, Saturday Breakfast Fellowship is going to be at the Firestone Grill from 9 to 10. Uh, unlike this week, a whole bunch of us won't be tired from moving a whole house last night. Uh, thanks to all those who helped with Willie and Diane's move, especially to Sl Sam and Leonard and everybody else who was a part of that. A special thank you this week to Miss Teresa and all the adults and teens who helped with our VBS. We are trying to plan ESL, English as a Second Language classes. If you or someone you know would like to be a part of that, let Jesus or I know. Uh, baptisms we have scheduled for August 2nd and um, also have Leadership 201 leading classes and groups that day. And then we'll be receiving new members on August 16th. We would love to have you be a part of that as it's appropriate for you and your family. Thanks so much for your support. Thanks for your attendance, either online or in person. Thanks for the care you give each other and the way you're keeping in touch with each other. And thank you for your giving. The technology that we've had to take care of to do this conversion to the life we now live is sometimes daunting. And so your giving and your support, it not only keeps the light on, but we've bought cables and speakers and mics and cameras. And it just, it's, it's interesting, but we thank you for your help. And as you can, you can give online at bit.ly slash ES, both capitalized give, or you can mail it to PO Box 550030, Gastonia, 28055, or you can call Larry Smith or I, and we'll meet you somewhere. You are announced. Thank you for being part of our service today. We ask God's blessings on your life. If you would, now let's get ready for our benediction. And pray for those of us who are going to on purpose hurt ourselves in the next few moments. From Romans 8.35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present or the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ, God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Go in the love of Christ today and do God's work this week. Amen. You are dismissed. Uh, you can come up and watch the craziness.